Hey everyone, welcome back to another Kubernetes tutorial. Today we are diving into the Kubernetes dashboard, the built-in web UI for managing your cluster. Whether you are just getting started with Kubernetes or want a faster way to visualize and interact with your development, this tool is super handy. So let's open the dashboard and explore all its features. To launch a dashboard, just run minikube followed by dashboard. Let me rerun it. I am running this in mobile XTERM. So whenever I run minikube dashboard, a pop-up will get open. You will see the minikube dashboard. This will open a new tab in your browser showing that Kubernetes dashboard. Let me walk you through the key session and feature you will use the most. Right after the login, you will see the deployment services and namespace. If the CPU and memory starts aren't showing, don't worry, the dashboard needs the matrix server to display those, but you can still view the workload status, spot any failing pods, catch broken deployments. If you want to enable the resource matrix, here are the steps. Go to the terminal, press Ctrl C. I have the command to install matrix server. Now check kubectl get pods hyphen n cube system the container is getting created let's wait for a few seconds side by side we can check the logs as well why it is not coming into ready state cube ctl logs hyphen n cube system and we can check the deployment for matrix server in the logs we can see one error x509 cannot validate the certificates let's patch this server I have patched the server for insecure access or we can say insecure TLS. This is only for testing. Check kubectl get ports. This is the old matrix server and this is newly created. Here you can see the matrix server is up and running and the status is ready to use. kubectl top nodes. Matrix server has been enabled and we can see the matrix here like 5%, 8%. And also we can see kubectl top nodes. Here also it is showing. If it works, you will now see CPU and memory stats both in your terminal and the dashboard. Let's cross verify in dashboard. Rerun minikube dashboard to start the dashboard window. Once we are able to see the Kubernetes dashboard, we will cross verify the matrix server. Here you can see we are able to see the matrix for CPU and memory usage. This has been enabled. 
earlier it was blank minikube uses the self signed tls certificates with missing ip signs in production this won't be an issue but locally matrix server needs a work around using the kubelet hyphen insecure hyphen tls flag so let's move on to the next session the workload session so here you can see the deployments replica sets pods and the deployments is uh, here you can see it is a hello mini cube and pods you can check the logs restart the container and see the status logs are very useful for debugging in event you can see if anything unusual happen let's click on pods scroll down here are the events you can see for the pod mini cube hello mini cube these are the perfect for troubleshooting the issue now let's move on to the service session click on the service tab it will show all the service like cluster ip node port load balancer details like port number endpoints and selectors if a node port service like hello mini cube is exposed it will be listed here if you are not able to see here and you have already exposed the hello mini cube you can check it on the terminal by running kubectl get svc here you can see the cluster ip type and the port let's move on to the next session click on config and storage in this section we can explore config maps and storage class config maps stores non sensitive configs and storage class here uh, we use a volumes for the apps like a database if your app cannot find configs or is not saving the data this is the first place to check next we move on to the namespace filter top left corner namespace filter you can click on the drop down super helpful to isolate the resource by environment dev test prod if things looks empty check the current namespace here also you can check the namespace scroll down in cluster section you can click to namespace and you can list all the namespace here now let's see how we can create a resource via dashboard you can click on the plus symbol and you can create a resource in three ways one method is you can paste the yaml and the next is you can import it from the file and third is to create from form so let's see one by one i have a sample file let's copy paste this yaml on the dashboard this is a great for quick testing or learning a yaml structure upload it so you can see the workload status here one is running and one is pending yet nginx demo is been created so next let's see the another method upload dot aml or dot json file from the machine ideally for sharing the manifest with your team or version controlling configs next method is use the gui form no yaml no problem fill the details like app name assume i will be creating nginx nginx we are creating it from a form so i have given a form and you can mention the nginx as a container image i can mention the latest and if you want you can increase the pods i will mention two and click on deploy it is getting created we have a advanced option as well when you click on create from form show advanced option here you can give the description labels image secrets 
CPU and memory limits, environment variables. This is great for the beginners. Let's move to the dashboard. Click on Kubernetes. And here you can see Nginx form this we have recently created. And this has been created from YAML file. Next, let's see how we can edit the existing resource. No need to run kubectl apply every time. You can navigate to the resource, click on the edit in the top right and modify the YAML. Let's do that. I will click on hello mini cube. Click on edit resource. Click anywhere in the YAML and press Ctrl F. If I want to uh, update replicas, I, can, I will search. I can search replicas here and directly I can update from 1 to 3 and click on update. Here you can see the status is updated from 1 to 3. Available is 2, unavailable is 1. We can also restart from here, edit it, and also we can delete the resource from here. Now, in dashboard under deployments, you can see the resource updated to 3, total 3, available 3. And also you can check with kubectl get deploy on the terminal. I have updated this from 1 to 3. Here you can see three ports are running. This is the old one and first and third one is newly created 59 seconds ago it has been created so let's move to the dashboard if the matrix server is installed we have already installed on minikube server we can view the matrix if the matrix server is running in your cluster the kubernetes dashboard can show the important resource usage like uh, cpu or memory usage for pod if this is the pod we can check go to the workload here you can see the cpu usage matrix and memory usage matrix click on the workloads once you scroll down you can see the cpu and memory usage matrix for each ports this turns the dashboard into a basic monitoring tool perfect for quick check without needing a full-fledged solution like Prometheus and Grafana. This will take some time because just now we have created the Nginx pod. After some time it will show the CPU usage matrix and memory usage matrix. And also scroll down. Click on the nodes, cluster nodes. Here you can see CPU and memory stats and matrix for minikube these visual graphs helps you to quickly understand which ports are consuming the most resource click on the ports here you can see which ports are consuming the most resource monitoring resource usage to get a real time feedback on how your cluster is performing easily identify the workload ports or nodes if there is any resource constraint simplifying the monitoring because this is a lightweight option before jumping into the tools like Grafan and Prometheus if you are working in a multi user or a production environment role based access control is super important you can control who sees what in the dashboard using role based access control policies this ensures that the user only sees the namespace and resource they are supposed to. Role based access control is essential for secure access control in real world cluster. How you can access the Kubernetes dashboard? It depends on where your cluster is running. In Minikube, it's super easy. 
when you run minikube dashboard it automatically opens a tunnel and launches the ui in your dashboard no extra setup needed but in cloud hosted or production cluster it's a different story you will usually need to set up a secure access either through kubectl proxy or ingress control or a load balancer logging in securely often requires a service account token or odic based authentication these setups are more locked down and that's important to keep your cluster safe from unauthorized access so for local testing minikube makes it simple but in real world scenario there is a stronger focus on access control and security why to use dashboard if you are just starting with kubernetes the dashboard is a game changer no need to memorize the kubectl commands everything is visual you can view the logs monitor the resource usage scale the deployments delete or recreate the app all with a few clicks it's especially great for visual learners and beginners trying to get comfortable with kubernetes concept whether you are just testing the app debugging or learning how yaml manifest work the dashboard gives you instant feedback that's it for this tutorial just to recap how to launch and navigate the kubernetes dashboard in minikube viewing the workload service configs and storage visually filtering the workloads by namespace creating a new app using yaml file upload or from the ui form editing live kubernetes resource directly in the dashboard viewing a real time cpu and memory usage using a matrix server why the dashboard is great for the beginners teams and quick monitoring the kubernetes dashboard gives you a visual playground to explore manage and troubleshoot your cluster without needing to run a kubectl every time it's perfect whether you are just starting or managing the real world environment and that's it for this tutorial if you found this walkthrough helpful like subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss more kubernetes and devops tutorials thanks for watching and see you in the next one